This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Imagine what your life could be like if you're, if you're knowing how to make the proper adjustments to be led by God, led by God to start a business where to start it, when to start it, led by God to take that job or not take that job, led by God uh, t for your mate and, and, and when you do get married, led by God on how to handle certain situations and not just handle it in a traditional way. This is a game changer for Christians. It's a great time to take a moment and look at all the progress you've made so far in your year. Are you happy with your progress with personal goals and achievement? If you'd like to take the initiative to take 15 minutes a day to start learning and growing, Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar. You will have access to interactive Bible lessons that include features like e-courses, study guides, quizzes, and more. Start your 30-day free trial or go online and visit mygracelifeacademy.com. If you have your Bibles this morning, go with me to the book of Proverbs. Uh, really, I'm excited about getting in this tonight, today. Proverbs 20, verse 27. And um, we're going to talk about some things. We've been talking about, last week we talked about God's commitment to lead and to guide us to our destiny. And God is committed. He, he prepares our steps. He's working on the inside of us. He's let us know that he knows the plans that he has for us, plans for good and not for disaster, plans for an expected end, and that God is the one that says, you know what, you can, you can try to, to uh, you know, to plan your life, but God's going to be responsible for the steps and he will get you to where you need to be. There's nobody in the room to th this morning that um, you're just here for no reason at all. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And in the time that we're living in today, we need to understand what God's plan is for our life. We don't need to be wasting time going in a circle over and over and over again and continuously missing the purpose and the plan for our life. If you are alive today, there's a plan that God has for you. I said, if you're alive today, there's a plan that God has for you. And the plans that he knows the plans that he has for you. And they're good, praise God. And but uh, I believe one of the things we need to recognize as Christian people is that, you know, if we're going to benefit from God knowing the plans for our life, we're going to have to understand how important our relationship is with him. And the interest of his word brings life and spending time with God. God knows how to direct us. God knows how to lead us. God knows how to speak to us. And in this day and time, you need to have that kind of relationship where God is directing your life and God is leading you. It's not just wearing the title of Christian but it's benefiting from a heavenly father that knows how to direct you, that uh, knows how to speak to you and say to you, this is the way, walk therein. To know that you have a God that you can hear to say turn left or turn right. And I think sometimes Christians have gotten so numb to the fact that they serve a God that can talk. And you are his sheep, and you can hear from God. And he wants to direct your path. And it's time for you to just simply acknowledge God knows how to direct me. God knows how to help me to get to where I'm supposed to be. It doesn't have to be hit or miss. Your relationship with God is designed so you can, you can hear this voice. You can begin to 
be sensitive to the directions that He will supply for your life. It is God's will for you to be led by Him. He wants you to be led by Him. He wants you to be led by Him. And so what I want to do this morning, yeah, I, I, I thought about referring to this as a, the prerequisites or, you know, things that are required beforehand. But when you deal with God and you deal with this covenant of grace, you know, there are a lot of things God will do out of His grace that you're, you're, you don't even qualify for. So I, I, I more or less want to get you to the point of understanding that this is how you can position yourself and to open yourself up to be able to be led by God and to hear from God. I thought about this scripture where it talks about that he gives more grace to the humble. And just by recognizing that, you become sensitive to living a life of humility and, and you know, it opens up what God can do. So the question is, am I doing something that's making it difficult for me to receive the transmission? How many, how many of you remember when we had the big antennas on top of our roof? All right, how many of you remember the little, little ears on top of the, 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 the television? You remember the aluminum foil? <laughs> you remember the little dial that used to turn to adjust it? We knew that a transmission for the broadcast was going out, but sometimes it was all about the positioning of the antenna. And sometimes I think we had people to come out and get on the roof to position. They would say, your antenna just needs to be adjusted. And they would come and position the antenna. This is what this is about today. I, I, I want to show you how to position the antenna. It's not that God is not speaking, more or less, you, your antenna, there's some things that you need to adjust so you can receive the transmission. It's not that he's not directing your life. We just need to, somebody need to get on the roof and adjust the antenna. Sometimes when, when, when Super Station 17 came out, and sometimes when we were up there with the, how many of you remember the hangar? <laughs> you know you had to be real broke to go to the hangar and the aluminum foil. But sometimes you would get up there and adjust it, and while your hand was on it, it would come in clear. And we'd say, don't move. <laughs> And you just be stuck there in that position trying to look at the television as well. But I'm telling you, I believe that what I'm going to share with you today are just instructions of how to position yourself to receive the transmission. Number one, <laughs> I want to get right into this. Uh, well, let's, let's look at the text. I apologize. Let's, let me give you a text. Look at Proverbs 20 and verse 27. Uh, we're going we're gonna to look at how to position the antenna to be led by God. Amen. Uh, here's what the Bible says in verse 27. He says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Now remember, man is a spirit. He possesses a soul and he lives in a physical body. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit being. Uh, spirit and soul over the years have been used interchangeably as if they are the same. You are a spirit, you have a soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotion. Your soul is your thinker, your feeler, and your chooser. You have, you, you, you have a soul, you are a spirit. Don't use those interchangeably. You have a soul, you are a spirit. Say, I am a spirit being. I, a spirit being. I, possess, a soul. I possess a soul, I live in a physical body. But the real you is a spirit being. You are not your soul. You are not your body. You are your spirit. You are a spirit being. When you die, then your spirit man, the real you, is separated from your body, the house that you live in. Glory be to God. Somebody says, well, I want you to know my grandmama. We lost my grandmama. No, your grandmama's not lost. If she's born again, to be absent from the body, watch this, is to be present with the Lord. So the real you is a spirit being. Say that out loud. The real me is a spirit being. Real me is a spirit being. I have a soul. I, have a soul. I, live a I live in a physical body. Now, the day you get born again, that, that spirit, man, is, is brand new. It's made just like God. 
So the next step, now that you're born again, a third of you is all, one third of you is already perfect. So the next part is to renew your mind with the Word of God. To renew your mind is an exchanging of your ideas and your ways of thinking to line up with God's ideas and His ways of thinking. Your mind is, is kind of like the pilot seat for your life. And the most important thing you can do as a born-again Christian is to renew your mind. Why? So you can prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable, watch this, will of God. You want to know the will of God, the plan of God for your life? I tell you, you've got to understand the importance of renewing your mind. And renewing your mind is not a one-time, you know, event. It, it is a lifetime process. It's something that we do every day of our lives. And I'm, I want to make this clear because somehow or another we think that, you know, when I became a Christian and now that I'm saved, everything's just going to be right. No. When you became a Christian and you're born again, your spirit man was made new, but your mind still needs to be renewed. You need to, you need to renew your mind. You need to think differently. Think differently. As a man, what? Thinketh, then what? So is he. Are you still stuck in that old mindset? Are you still stuck in the way you used to think 10 years ago? And things are still the same because your thinking is still the same? Change the way you think, then you'll change the way you live. But if you maintain, even after you got born again, maintain that old mindset, then you're going to maintain that old life set. So here's what he said. The spirit of a man, your born-again spirit, is the candle of the Lord. Now, what does the candle do in the natural? You light that candle in the natural, it will begin to provide guidance in dark places. And he says he's going to light your spirit. You're going to get born again. Your spirit now, the new creation, is the candle of the Lord, and notice, searching all the inward parts of the belly. God will guide you through your spirit. God will guide you through your spirit. And so there are certain positions that, that I believe that we've got to begin to get in in order to take full advantage of divine direction. Uh, God just, doesn't just lead, lead everybody. I know that because of just how my life was before I got saved. He doesn't just lead, lead everybody. But I believe those people who position the antenna and get yourself in place. And, 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 and I don't want to call these, these are the things you have to do because Paul's going around killing Christians and persecuting the church. And God interrupts his life and begins to direct him down the very purpose for his life. But what I am saying is that as you understand this gospel of grace, also understand that as uh, a student of grace and as a Christian, I can begin to adjust my antenna and, and believe God's grace to help me to make those adjustments so I can be in a position to receive uh, more of God's transmission. So here's the first adjustment. Number one, I believe, I believe born again is important. I believe you got to be born again. I believe that's important. We must be covenant children of God, I believe, before we can take advantage of being led by Him, based on just what I just read. Being born again. And uh, St. John 3.3, 3, these are some, some pretty familiar scriptures, but I think we need to just take another look at them in light of what I'm talking about. John 3 and 3, Jesus was talking. He answered and He said unto him, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot, watch this, perceive, see, or have clarity of the kingdom of God. So there's something about you want clarity about God's ways. Uh, you want clarity about God's kingdom. He said, except a man be born again, something about your born again spirit that helps you to perceive and to have clarity of, of the things that God wants to do in your life. So a spiritually dead man cannot perceive the things of God. I do know that for a fact. A spiritually dead man cannot perceive perception of the things of God. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. I want to give you a list so you can go home and begin to pray about it and allow the Holy Spirit to take this information and, and, and show you how to work with it. Verse 14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto a natural man, neither can he know them, because they are what? Spiritually discerned. 
So even some things that God would speak to you as a natural man, not discerning it by the Spirit, you won't, you won't discern it anyway. You, you'll count it as something that's foolish anyway. God's telling you to forgive somebody that you've got ought against. God's telling you to, to walk in love with somebody you're not really fond of. See, these things are spiritually discerned, and He's just trying to position you in a place so He can direct, high, d direct your life. And then in Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, if you'll flip over there, Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, I, I hope you can tell that I'm, 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 I'm really, really believing God to help me to, to, to spend a lot of time getting you back focused in on the Word of God and getting you back focused in on what I'm saying. Let's see what the Word that goes with it so you can take it seriously and begin to, you know, get into this thing and realize that these, the, the interests of God's Word will bring light. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, uh, and he says this in verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if you're born again, you're sons and daughters of God. It is God's full intent for you to be led by His Spirit. He wants you to be led by His Spirit. So let's go ahead and release our faith right now. I am a son of God or a daughter of God. Go ahead and say it. I am, I am led by the Spirit. That's God's will. God wants to lead you by His Spirit. Man, check this out. God, you're no longer just going to be the T-shirt Christian. God is going to lead you by His Spirit, and He's going to teach you how to profit, and He's going to teach you how to live this life. And up until this point, you've just been going by what you know with the Christian label. But now we're saying, it's, it, you know, this is a game changer. Now you're learning how to walk with your unseen partner. Now you're learning how to live life under the direction of the Holy Spirit. And you know, it's gonna, that's going to stop you from being on 285 for so much. So 285 goes around the city, and you just keep passing the same thing by 285. Honey, I'm here today to get you off 285 and show you there's an exit to the path and the will of God for your life. Amen? All right, so. I believe born again is going to help you to receive directions from God. Now, here's what I'm excited about this morning. Uh, the, the second adjustment we need to make to our spiritual antenna uh, that I believe will help you to be led by the Spirit of God is, is learning how to, how to live a life of meekness. Meekness. It's something that we've heard as a part of the fruit of the Spirit, but I don't know if a lot of Christians re really understand how to live this life of meekness. When it comes to being led by the Spirit of God, I, I, I can't help but to think about Moses who uh, got this uh, assignment from God and he started at age 80. He absolutely had no idea how this works. He totally had to depend on God. Now somebody said was Moses was, was perfect. Well, Moses wasn't. He, he killed a man. Uh, there was a lot of things he did, but God still chose him. And uh, the powerful thing about Moses, I love, is the fact that Moses depends on God. He knows he can't do it unless he's led by God. But Moses, it was kind of funny. The, at one time I thought the Bible said that Moses was the meekest man in all the world. And I realized that Moses was the author of the book, so Moses said that about himself. <laughs> he, so he had to let us know somehow. Hey, man. But it showed me that meekness is probably a pretty powerful adjustment for us to make I mean, if you just take note of how God led him, he led him through the, through the wilderness and led him through, all, through the Red Sea. And, 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 you know, how do you know to do all of this stuff except you be led by the Holy Spirit? Imagine what your life could be like if you're, if you're knowing how to make the proper adjustments to be led by God, led by God to start a business where to start it, when to start it, led by God to take that job or not take that job, led by God uh, t for your mate and, and, and when you do get married, led by God on how to handle certain situations and not just handle it in a traditional way. This is a game changer for Christians. If for a Christian people who are Spirit-fed and Spirit-led people, you're going to find yourself being taught how to profit. You're going to find yourself winning in this game of life because you understand that you you have access to being led by the Spirit of God. Well, let's start here in Psalms 25 and verse 9. What does the Bible say here about uh, this area of meekness? Let's, let's see what it is. Let's see if we can break this down enough so that you can challenge your life to begin to live a, a meek life. Verse 9 in Psalms 25 says that um, 
the meek will be, the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. Well, that's what we're after, right? We want his guidance and he wants, we want him to, to show us in the way. And he says, the meek, he will do that. The meek, he will do that. So I'm, I'm interested already. If, if the meek gets your guidance and if you show the meek the way, I, I, I want to know how to get into that. Well, let's go to Psalms 103 and 7. Psalms 103 and 7. I tell you, if I can get a, if I can get a church full of people, if I can get people here in church here in our e-church to, to get just radical about being led by the Spirit of God and, and stop going ahead of the Holy Spirit, but allow the Holy Spirit to go ahead of you. That's what it means to yield to the Spirit of God. He goes ahead of you and you follow Him rather than you going ahead of the Holy Ghost and look back and see if He following you. I, I just think that we're living in a, in a time now where we come out on top because we're being led by the Holy Spirit and we're yielding to Him rather than uh, yielding to what we think is a good idea. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes good ideas are not God ideas. And I would prefer to have God ideas because they're already anointed versus having good ideas where I got to go and pray and see if I can get God to touch it for me. <laughs> Rubber stamp this for me, God. Amen. So now look what he says, Psalms 103, verse, um, verse 7 here. Uh, he, he, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of, of Israel. I, I, want, I want him to make his way known to me. That, sh that should really be the desire of every Christian in here. I, I want to know your way. I, I, listen, I, I don't know the way. It, it's like it's, it, we're finally going to submit ourselves to God to a point where we say, I don't know how to get there. You know, sometimes God can even show you what to do, but I don't know how to get there. And that's why I thought this was so important today. I wanted to give some practical things. You're convinced that God has a path and a will for your life. I don't know how to get there. So God, show me the way. Show me how to get to that point. The Bible said that Moses was the meekest man in all of the earth, so he had access to the ways of God. And today you and I have access to the ways of God, amen? As believers under grace, the Word of God reminds us that we are no longer living under the law, but are to be led by the Spirit in all that we do. The Holy Spirit guides us and gives us a divine advantage in every aspect of our lives. If only we would receive it. If you are struggling with yielding to the guidance of your unseen partner, the Holy Spirit, or need a boost in your faith to follow Him, the five-message CD series, The Spirit-Led Life, is just for you. Receive it today for just 30 U.S. dollars. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. When you put your focus and consideration on what the Word says, then you'll begin to be spirit-led versus emotionally led. You have to get today's message, you guys. It's so powerful, it will literally change your life. Or you can combine this transformative series with the highly requested book, The Holy Spirit, Your Financial Advisor. This $50 bundle is available today for just $40. US Call now or visit the website on the screen to order. There is a purpose for your life, and you are meant to do great things. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar. For one low monthly subscription, you'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 to get started right now or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. Have you ever wondered how the financial support from our viewers makes a difference in people's lives? We receive testimonies every day from people whose lives have been shattered by natural disasters, failed marriages, bankrupt businesses, and so on. They share how our outreach efforts and messages about God's grace have changed their lives in a tangible way. And for that, we give God all the glory. Today, I invite you to prayerfully consider financially supporting this ministry. We know you'll be empowered to see real change in others and prosper in your own life. 
If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. For those of you who you've been going through this entire pandemic and you've experienced the fear of COVID, maybe the loss of a loved one, maybe a positive test, I want to take an opportunity to pray with you just right now. Just join me in this simple prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you right now declaring that you are the almighty God. You're the healer. You're the deliverer. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that your mighty hand will be upon these precious people, their families, their fathers, mothers, their children. And in the name of Jesus, those who have been uh, in infected by COVID-19, I release the healing power of God right now, and I declare that you be healed right now in the name of Jesus. For those who walk around with the fear of it, I command that fear to go in Jesus' name. And for any who have tested positive, don't be moved by what you see or what you hear. And I declare that in Jesus' name, all of that is taken care of. No symptoms at all. So right now, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I declare great victory over your life. I declare that you will be successful in remaining above any symptoms of COVID-19. And I declare by faith, that with his stripes, you are healed. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Amen. We have one mission, to tell the world that our God is alive. Because all that we are is because of who Jesus is. Not just because he died, but because he lives. Because he cares. Because he loves. And because he is God. So who are we? We are his hands, his feet, his people. We are His church. So we take His message of grace all around the world to the fatherless, to the hungry, to the hurting, to the old, and to the young we go. As He is, so are we. We are world changers. Your generosity allows us to make a difference in the lives of people all over the world. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.